So welcome to Team Vault. This is our capstone project where we created a budget system to manage our personal finances. My name is Lindsay. I have a bachelor's of science in biology and neuroscience from the University of Florida and my master's in psychology from University of North Florida. During my time as a graduate student, I really just fell in love with the problem solving and technical design aspects of psychological research, which led me down the road of coding and discovering Dev10. And this love has only grown throughout this 12 week course. Hi everyone, my name is Diana and I have a bachelor's in international relations and Asian studies from UNC Chapel Hill. I've always been passionate about tech and understanding how modern technology systems work as they permeate every aspect of our lives, as well as how coding can solve problems that humans can't in a reasonable time frame. Development is a collaborative and innovative environment and I'm grateful to Dev10 for giving me the opportunity to enter this exciting field. Hi guys, my name is Zari. I have a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from UCL. I had my first code experience in college in my computer science class and I fell in love with it. I am a natural problem solver and my passion lies in use logic to discover solutions that are both simple and also efficient. I learned about Dev10 through a friend uh, who highly spoke about the program and its potential to launch my career in the tech industry. So why did we create a budget app? Um, when we started the prog project, we realized what we had in common was an interest in budgeting and finance management in our own lives. So we wanted to create a budget application that has the features that we personally want or features that we felt were maybe not as fleshed out as we'd like in other apps out there. The purpose of this app is to manage personal finances. You can create multiple budgets and savings goals and as well, as well as building this project for our own interest, uh, we wanted to get more insight into financial coding. That is dealing with transactions, aggregating financial data, and making reports. Let me go ahead and show you our website. I'll take it. Okay, so when you load up our application, you come to the landing page, which looks like this. We have a home button, a login, and a sign up. I'm gonna walk us through signing up a new user. I'm just put in some test data. Okay, so if all goes well, you can create a user. Otherwise, you'd get an error message telling you what you'd need to change to properly and successfully create a user. So let's go log in with our test user. Alrighty, so when you press login and successfully, you're taken to the dashboard, which looks like this. Unfortunately, our test user doesn't have any data, so it'll look a little bit blank for a little bit. On the side, you'll have a navigation bar, which will be present on every page in the logged in state. So we have our dashboard, transactions, budgets, savings, reports, and then the logout button. We're gonna go ahead and log out and log back in with John Smith, who loves our website and uses it all the time, as you can see. So when you log in, this is what a dashboard looks like that has transactions already. Um, let's go ahead and add a transaction and see what that does. When you open transactions, you have all the lists of transactions in a filter, and you can see the description, the amount, and as well as an edit and delete button. I'm gonna go ahead and add a sample transaction. Let's say I misclicked and I wanted to submit a blank transaction. We have validations that does not allow that. So when you click on goal type, you can choose between budgets or savings. This is mandatory, as well as the category. Let's say that we bought some takeout for $50 on Tuesday. When you submit this transaction, it will populate right over here. Oh, goodness. Well. That was supposed to be 50. <laughs> um, when you submit that, you'll see that here. When I typed in the amount, I didn't add a negative or a positive. This is automatically formatted depending on the category that you chose and the budget type, if it's a budget or a spending. I mean, a budget or a saving. 
Now let's go back over to the dashboard. You can see that this is a responsive dashboard. The transaction that I just added is seen over here. This shows the top five recent transactions, and that also takes you to the transactions tab. This chart also shows you that we added something on the 22nd. And when you hover over our pie chart, you can see more information about the budget that you're looking at. Now I'm gonna pass this over to Lindsay, who will talk to you a little bit more about transactions and their relationship with budgets and savings. Okay, so looking at our transactions list, I have the transaction that Diana just added. Uh, like she mentioned, you can filter by date. So let's say we wanted to look at only our transactions from last month, we can click that and that'll pop up in our table. Any transaction that you add is going to be put in this list. We can also edit it. So let's actually change that to 50, what we were supposed to put in and submit that. And you can see that that has been changed to R50. So that's how you add a transaction. That's great. But if you notice, when we added it, we had to put in our category. So where is that category coming from? If we click over to our budgets, that's where we're going to get a list of all of the budgets for the current month that we're in. And this is ordered again in date order from most recent. And we can sort just the same as our transactions if we wanted to look at a different time frame. This is showing us all of our individual transactions or all our individual budgets. And we can also see a progress bar for each budget. So if we look at our food, we can see that we're about 62% of the way to our goal for August. Clicking over to savings is going to give us a really similar list, um, except this is just for all of our savings goals. So emergency fund, vacation fund, anything that you're saving for. Heading back over to budget, if we click into a goal, like our food goal, this gives us a little bit more information about that budget. So our goal is $550 for the month and our current balance is 345. And it also shows us a list of all of the transactions for that budget during that time frame from August 5th through the 31st. And this is also going to include that new transaction that we just made down here. So it's the end of the month. I need to start planning my budgets for September. So we can go over to add a budget here. I'm gonna put in a category from our pre-populated list of categories. I'll just go ahead and select mortgage and rent. Put that in. Select for September. And select add because we're not in September right now, I do have to filter to all goals. And then you can see that that pops up right up top because that's our most recent. And if we click into it, we don't have any transactions yet, but as we get into September, we can add those to our budget. So now I'll take it over to Ariani to explain deletion and our report system. Can you guys hear me well? So now, guys, I'm going to show you guys some of uh, nice features that you have in our project, OK? So for this demonstration, I want you guys to keep in mind two, one business rule, rule and one nice feature that you have. One business rule is if a saving goals or a budget goal has a transaction associated to it, you cannot delete. And the second one is a feature that is the user, he can't update old transactions. But for example, during the update process, the user will be only able to you the user will be able to associate this transaction with a goal that they had during the past period, uh, even though if they don't have the goal anymore. Let's demonstrate what I'm saying. So I am with the user John here, and you guys can see in my screen that he had on August of last year two saving goals, emergence found and income. And you also can see here by the bar that he had transactions associated to it. So if you want to just make sure, let's open up. And you see that the delete button does not populate. So let's work so I can delete this transaction, right? And like you guys see here, um, August last year, he had a saving goals income and retirement found. And if you go for budgets, for last year, he had health and fitness and food. So now if I go back on transactions, uh, filter by last year, I can get, for example, these emissions found and edit this transaction. 
And let's say the user made a mistake and he want to transfer for the options he had last year, but he does not have no more, like the goal he had last year, but he does not have anymore. He can choose income and he can submit the transaction, make this transfer. So now when he go for savings for last year, you guys see here that everything went to income and images found has no, has no transaction associates anymore. So now when you click on images found, you now the delete button populate and now the user can delete. So you offer like a user friendly interface and a confirmation page for user for the user so he can delete exactly what he wants and he can delete now he can delete uh, the saving goal. So if you go for savings last year, now we want to going to be able to see income go. Okay. Another nice feature that you have is reports. We want to give our users the ability of uh, create a report of his old transactions. Um, and for that, you use two new technology that was ITEX and Amazon AWS that I'm going to be talking future slides. But for now, I'm just going to demonstrate how it works. Like I said before, you have really user-friendly interface. So you can come, the user can come here and click an add report, select a period of time, let's say, last month until, I don't know, the 15th. Uh, he can also choose like the goal type, if it's budget or saving, let's choose budget, and he can click create a report, and the report is going to be here. There is going to be redirect for the report page, and now he can download the report. And if you see here, I can open the report, and he, he is a PDF file. He can also print the report if he wants to. Or also, he can delete the report if he doesn't want it anymore. So you also give the user another user-friendly user interface for the deletion of the report. So let's go back to the slides. Sorry about, oh, great. One second, guys. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the slides. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology that we use. So for our, our backend, we use S core language Java, bundle up of Spring Boot. So this make our application fast and intelligent. Uh, for easy retrieval of data, we use it for our database MySQL. Um, we use it for our friendly interface uh, React with JS. And we use, uh, for improve our appearance, we use Machi UI. Our, we also use uh, JSON Web Token, so you can increase security through uh, access control, authentication and access control. And we truly test our app with JUnit, okay? So now I'm going to pass for my colleague, Diana. Yes. So what you see in front of you is our schema. Um, when we approached this project, um, we started from the data layer up. And I think we approached it like most people would when you think about an, a budgeting app. You split transactions into saving and into uh, into spending and into income. So that's how we first started it. But however, we realized this was not a necessary distinction to make. As you can see in the lower left table transaction, that only includes amount. So the way that we would differentiate between if it was a budget or a saving is in the goals table, which has the spending goal and the savings goal. And then the category table is separate, which is then connected to goals, which is then connected to the transactions table. So this is the relationship in the back end. However, the way that we presented it in the front end is different. And that took a little bit of work to figure out how exactly we were going to manage our data. And the way that we did that is by implementing a lot of different filters in order to get that two separate display between our budgets and our savings. Additionally, we used a lot of different date filters and sorting in order to get our dashboard to display just the current month of all of our transactions. So for example, this graph, we had date filters as well as a lot of calculations to get that cumulative total. And then we also had to break down that total by current budget for the current month. In order to make all of our graphs and visuals for this app, we utilized Material UI and Recharts. The project required 
features that demand us to learn new technologies, like I mentioned before. One technology that I learned through Capstone was ITEX PDF Generator, that is a Java is a powerful Java library that allowed us developers to dynamically generate PDFs. Uh, another tool that I learned that I also implemented was Amazon uh, S3. That is a cloud storage service provided by Amazon service. Um, I used it, the AWS to upload and download uh, our PDF from the cloud. So the user has a secure, secure easy way to access when you are within the internet, internet connection. It's his reports. So overall, the functionality of our app allows users to add, edit, and delete budgets, savings goals, and transactions to those goals, as well as download a PDF report of our transactions. In the future, we would also like to add user ability to add, edit, and delete a category. Currently, we just have a pre-populated list of categories that the user can choose from, but adding this functionality would allow a more personalized user experience. And we do currently in our schema have a separate table for category, which is going to allow us to implement this functionality. Another feature vision that you had was implemented, implementing an admin interface. So this admin interface could oversee user accounts, contents, settings, control who can access and modify parts of our app, safeguard sensitive information. Overall, this admin interface will manage our app roles and giving roles and permissions. And last but not least, we would like to make a mobile version of our app. Um, we're all interested in using and learning more about React Native for its cross-platform ability. We think do doing this would add accessibility and improve UI design choices. Like Lindsay mentioned earlier, we use Material UI, and we'd be interested in looking at other frameworks that would help us enable, enable us to build a consistent and friendly design across all of our pages. That concludes the presentation of our Vault budget app. Does anyone have any questions? It does look like we have a few questions. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, I can go ahead and take the first one with the filtering. Um, so was the various list filtering, filtering difficult to implement? And are we doing that in the front end or the back end? Um, it, the actual implementation of the filtering was not difficult. The thought process of trying to figure out what needed to be filtered, what then needed to be added together, that whole planning was a little bit challenging. Um, and then we did, we went back and forth on whether we should filter in the front end or the back end. Um, but because of it being so dynamic, we ended up going in the front end uh, and allowing that kind of flexibility in the front end and keeping our back end the same. And as for the second question, how difficult it was to make the graphs, um, we used Material UI and React um, Recharts JS. So it was more so of fetching the data and like Lindsay said, making sure we had the proper filters in place so that it was pulling in the data from the right places and then putting it onto our screens. And so with that framework, it actually became a lot more straightforward to implement that once we found material UI. Yeah, and just to, to add on to that, it using material UI was really, really simple. Um, I think for all of us, the most difficult part of, of the design was getting things to fit where we wanted it to and, and mm -hmm. yeah, fitting those graphs in the dashboard exactly how we wanted them was probably the most challenging part. Yeah. Um, what tools did you guys use to coordinate with one another? We had, we had a Google Doc that every morning we would kind of have our list of goals and a little checklist and we would do that. Um, and then we also utilized Teams a lot and, and had meetings before class and message each other through Teams. Yeah, and we also had a stand up every morning and then also before we left for the day of what did we get done today? What do we wanna get done before tomorrow? And what are our goals? For the next couple of days, are we on track? 